I am a very calm person. When I play uh, soccer, I have this energy. I don't know where it comes from, but I let go of everything. I like this feeling. Ru Abdullah is the captain of one of the few female soccer teams in Saudi Arabia. Their name, Challenge, is appropriate given what they have to go through just to play a match in this conservative country. We don't have clubs, we don't have trainers. Here I can't go and play publicly uh, because we have to cover. Even proper shoes are hard to come by here. Most of these women are wearing the smallest men's cleats they could find. I want to be an athlete, but I can't be uh, an athlete if I don't have uh, the equipment that make me an athlete. As Wujdan Sharhakani and Sarah Attar become the first two women to represent Saudi Arabia in the Olympics, women within the country remain deprived of the opportunity to play sports, which are absent from school curriculums and banned in public. Challenge plays in secret locations around Riyadh. Today, they are practicing in a friend's backyard. The team started playing four years ago and have since grown to include over 30 players although most refuse to appear on camera. Even though my family and me are okay with this, my extended family, they would not agree with me playing. Their obstacles might seem great, but Rue and her teammates are fortunate compared to most women in the country. On a cool Saturday evening in Riyadh, you can find hundreds of women partaking in one of the only exercises available to them walking. Honestly, look, there are girls that are very into sports. Saudi girls do it well, but we don't have places for them to go and exercise in. Along with sports, most women grow up without physical education and access to gyms. So in their abayas, they circle the block that surrounds Prince Sultan University. Just behind this wall is a soccer pitch they are prohibited from using. Of course this is wrong. There are no sports activities for girls or women. It's a matter of health. One in every three women here are obese, and about a quarter have diabetes. That's the fourth highest rate in the world. In light of these statistics, the Ministry of Education has promised to implement physical education in women's schools, but nothing concrete has been announced. Here. Some women have taken matters into their own hands. This is a one-pager. About our team. In Jeddah, Lina Al Maina has spent the last 10 years managing the Jeddah United Sports Company, a co ed sports league with around 300 active players. When I first started, we didn't have any money, we didn't have a court, we didn't have a coach, we didn't have anything, you know, and I think we, along with others, have opened up doors. The official Jeddah United team, which Lina plays on, has won a number of international tournaments and was the first women's team in Saudi Arabia to be nationally televised. Lena says the opposition to women's sports has faded over the last decade and will likely give way to public health concerns. It's not a choice anymore. It's a necessity. It's a national duty to actually promote the culture of sports in Saudi Arabia. Rue is hoping to follow in Lena's footsteps. The 28-year-old plans to connect her team with others across Saudi Arabia and start the country's first national sports academy. I want for women to come and practice sports, any sports they want. Okay. So they can practice it as a hobby or they can train to be an athlete or a professional player. This is what I dream of. My team, I think that we grow as a friend and um, we help each other even and things out of the soccer. Sports makes your life uh, better. I think that we should have this right. From Riyadh, this is Jacob Templin for Time.